Masonry Moisture in Old Houses Old buildings frequently have the unwanted accompanying aspect of moisture in their walls, which causes increasing damage over the years. The unpleasant accompanying aspect is referred to as rising damp. In this graphic diagram, you can see how ground moisture is rising. It's a nearly invisible phenomenon. It becomes visible in higher portions of the wall due to damaged plaster. The results are damage of paint, water stains, salt efflorescence and plaster flaking on the facade of the house. By the interaction of complex chemical and physical forces acting on this masonry, it will be slowly but surely destroyed. Basic data. From building physics, we know that water is absorbed from building materials like a sponge. This effect is referred to as the capillary effect. If we put two materials of different porosity into a water bowl, we will observe the following. Building materials with larger pores absorb more, while those with smaller pores absorb less. The thinner these pores are, the more capillaries they have, the higher the water rises. In old masonry that lacks a horizontal moisture barrier, or where it is partly rotten, ground moisture rises into masonry. Ground moisture in the capillaries of masonry rises to a point where it oozes out as water vapour at the so-called evaporation zone. This results in the capillary head in masonry, which grows a little every year. It may be manifested as annual rings caused by different degrees of salt efflorescence. Moisture penetrates the ground due to precipitation, dew or groundwater. It then enters the foundation of masonry where it rises and evaporates, mainly in higher portions of the wall. The greater the quantity of moisture, the larger is the amount of evaporation at the evaporation zone. As a result, Salts that damage the basic structure of a building enter the masonry from the ground. The salts rise in a dissolved in water condition into the capillaries of masonry and are deposited in the evaporation zone in higher layers of masonry, especially in the pores of the plaster. The salts of building materials are also dissolved by the moisture stream, then rise and additionally enter the pores of the plaster. Due to such evaporation, most salts are deposited in air pores, which are crucial for the regulation of the atmosphere in the room and clog the pores. The breathability of the plaster is thus reduced. In conventional plasters, salts usually rise to the visible plaster surface when they crystallise. The pressure of such crystallisation and other chemical and physical mechanisms eventually destroy the plaster. In renovation plasters, the aggressive salts are deposited in the lowest layers of plaster. The salts clog these pores and the plaster becomes waterproof. This makes the capillary head rise even higher and destroy further layers of plaster and wall. As wet masonry permits heat to flow out more easily than dry masonry, the heat insulation of the building worsens. This means the following for you much higher heating costs in the winter. The magnetophysical drying out process. Water has special properties. We get many interesting phenomena when energy influences water. For instance, when you rub a woolen scarf against a plastic tube, you create an electrostatic energy field. Did you know that even this small energy field can deflect a 2mm thin thread of water. Certain energy forms can direct water molecules. Observations showed that a similar situation occurs with the magnetophysical high-tech procedure of Aquapol. There are many aspects to the exact mechanisms of action prompting much ongoing research. An aquapole system was installed in the building. 
It covers the entire area of the building. This patented high-tech system, which is placed in a special case, you see some bigger models here, performs two basic functions. It dries out masonry with specific energy waves and also keeps it dry. This explains the word magnetokinesis, which we coined for the first time in 1988. Waves similar to electromagnetic ones cause motion or kinesis. In this case it is the movement of rising capillary moisture. The energy wave structures apparently play a role in nature and in the cosmos in cases of spiral phenomena. Mr. Mohorn was awarded an honorary prize by the Ministry of Science for researching these energy wave structures on behalf of the Aquapole company. The Aquapole system causes no electrosmog because it does not require any electrical connection or batteries. According to a hypothesis of the inventor and patent holder, Mr. William Mohorn, the futuristic internal structure of the Aquapole system is a novel generator with an innovative mode of energy supply. Its components are reminiscent of those of the long forgotten but ingenious inventor Nikola Tesla, who laid the foundation for a worldwide introduction of the three-phase alternating current. For his basic functional research and successful implementation of these principles to dry out walls, Mr. Mahorn was awarded the Kaplan Medaglia, the highest award for researchers and inventors in Austria. Aquapol Company developed complex and innovative high-tech measurement procedures for the production and quality control of the Aquapol systems. These guarantee high quality and 100% functionality in the long term. The phases of drying out. The magnetokinetic process of drying out walls takes place in two overlapping phases. The period in which wall moisture evaporates in the upper portion of the wall is known as the evaporation phase. However, a large part of the moisture moves back downward into the ground due to the waves produced by the device. We refer to this period of drying as the dehumidification phase. During the drying out process in the evaporation phase, the salts dissolved in water are transported to the plaster zone where they partly crystallize because of the evaporation process. The evaporation process along with the crucial process of partial desalination usually takes 3 to 12 months. This was confirmed by exact salt measurements in an expert report based on a major project in Germany. The less salts there are in the basic structure of the building, the less is the residual moisture in the wall. However, the large part of masonry moisture moves back into the ground through the capillary system in the wall, which is the actual phase of dehumidification. What remains is the chemically bound residual moisture in masonry. The external climate might play a major role when walls contain a lot of salt. This is why we occasionally encounter moisture variations due to climatic factors, although the wall will have achieved its level of residual moisture. If the wall merely needs a new coat of paint, it should be painted after the evaporation phase. According to the O-Norm, Austrian standard, and according to our long years of practical experience, the actual plaster renovation should be performed only after the wall has been dried. One thus avoids migration of the salts into the new plaster and consequent undesirable chemical reactions. When the salt content of the old plaster is too high, moisture spots will appear on the surface. Their intensity depends on the level of humidity. As we know, salts have hygroscopic properties in that they strongly attract moisture. Which services does Aquapol offer? Watch part 2. Building analysis by the salesman. 
Every building is analysed in regard of its moisture damage by a trained Aquapol salesman who uses a moisture diagnosis device for this purpose. All essential data are noted on the building analysis checklist. When one encounters symptoms of rising moisture, the Aquapol device can help to remedy the situation. Even a small quantity of rising moisture is enough to cause moisture damage in the long term. Other causes of moisture are also revealed, provided they can be discovered visually or registered on our measurement device. These causes can be eliminated in combination with other measures or techniques. Placing the order, installation, efficacy test and service. Once the client agrees to place the order with the salesman, an appointment is made for the installation. Before the installation, the technician performs diagnostic investigations of masonry using the appropriate measuring devices. He determines capillary heads for the entire building and draws a capillary head diagram. Geological influences on masonry moisture and other important details are noted on the plan. Moisture measurements are carried out according to the scientifically accepted DAR method at places determined in agreement with the client. This laboratory measuring device guarantees highest precision fast determination of moisture content on site and maximum objectivity for the client and the results are noted in the measurement report. Climate data from the outside and the inside as well as the degree of salinization of plaster and masonry are recorded. Diagnostic investigations of masonry provide further information about the condition of walls. Any accompanying measures that may be required are then discussed with the client. Accompanying measures may be needed to prevent local hindrances to the drying out procedure. Such measures include the repair of the roof water runoff system, removal of moisture blocking layers or layers containing excessive salt. We also discuss ventilation habits in order to reduce or prevent condensation water. The location for the device is determined on the basis of local data and specific measurements. The Aquapol device is then installed. The Aquapol efficacy test is carried out in a standard way. With this test, we can verify the direct effect of the Aquapol system and render it visible for our clients, even in most remote portions of masonry. Depending on the agreement with the client, Aquapol monitors the drying out process at regular intervals and advises the client as regards accompanying measures and appropriate renovation procedures. This is done on site by the technician or via telephone by our technical department. Rooms with a high level of humidity such as bathrooms, kitchens, bedrooms, cellars or rooms with cold walls may occasionally reveal condensation moisture on the wall surface in addition to rising moisture. When this turns into a permanent condition, the masonry behind becomes more moist. Aquapol offers solutions for this problem as well. Aquapol's references. Aquapol's list of references includes buildings of very different sizes and building materials. The Aquapol system is suitable for clay, brick, mixed brickwork and porous stone masonry. 
Numerous farms, single-family houses, apartment houses, schools and public buildings have been dried out most effectively by the aquapole system, without cutting into walls and without chemical substances. Sometimes none or very little accompanying measures, such as the removal of old plaster, are needed to free a building from rising damp. Even large buildings can be dried at a reasonable price with this intelligent technology. Former wet cellars can be used again. A large number of listed buildings can be freed from destructive rising damp. The environment friendly aquapole system will keep the building dry for decades because these high tech systems contain no electronic wear parts and supply their own cost free energy. This revolutionary technology saves valuable cultural assets and frescoes. With the Acropole device installed in the Parliament of Budapest in 1991, one wing of the building could be completely dried out in just one year. Acropole is the fastest system of this kind. The innovative character and the many positive properties and side effects of the Acropole system explain the large number of international prizes and favourable expert opinions the company has received. This level of recognition is unparalleled in this sector of alternative methods of drying out walls. You may request further information material directly at Aquapol International or from the Aquapol branches in your country. The Aquapol salesman in your vicinity will be glad to advise you about the possibilities of installing an Aquapol device in your building. Simply give us a call or write us.